Didn't you date like a pop star in Amsterdam or something like <laughs> that? Like some weird shit like that. From a boy band? Yes, like something fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like <laughs> That's worth being brought up. No, it was <laughs> fucked up. Yasmin's from Amsterdam. Yeah, I was born and raised in Amsterdam. Yeah. She still speaks the language and it sounds fucking do. crazy when she does. People tell me right now, like my American friends are like, when you speak Dutch, it sounds like you're speaking Dutch with an American accent. Can you speak more than those no, two? Just Dutch and English. But also like I've been living here for a while now mm -hmm. i've been living here for more than six years i think i moved to new york when i was 16 mm -hmm. all by myself mm -hmm. why for modeling yeah. yeah you got scouted in amsterdam yeah i got scouted in amsterdam and then with elite and mm -hmm. i got a contract with them mm -hmm. and then i was in high school when i got scouted in my last year of high school and i graduated high school at 16. why were you 16 when you graduated well was it I, is it different there? It is different there, yes. Mm -hmm. I skipped one grade. Mm -hmm. But it's also in Amsterdam, you have Skip one grade where you like a a prodigy? I was I was <laughs> Cuz that's like you have to be fucking smart to skip a grade. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. Yeah. But I was also a lot younger. I skipped one grade when I was like maybe like 10 or 9 okay. or something. Okay. So you moved to New York when you were 16. Yeah, I moved to New York with the modeling. intention to model with Elite. Yes. Well, no, I was already scouted. I, yeah. I already, I, I was already working in Europe. I did um, the Valentino show and the Prada. Yeah. What show. was like? What was the first job you did for modeling? Period. A uh, Valentino. So you were 16, and was what was 16. it? Was it a campaign or a show? No, it was a Valentino show. Okay. It was a Valentino show in Paris. It was crazy. I so what no was that what like was going doing. from have never done in, do, doing anything in fashion to now suddenly walking for Valentino? It was really crazy also. But crazy in what way? Like that's fucking cause, nuts. Because I was I was so young and I was working with all of these adults mm -hmm. and I honestly didn't even know what I was doing. And then in the beginning of my career, clients sometimes went up to my agent. And they were like, oh, like she's kind of being a diva or she's kind of bitchy. Mm -hmm. But that was not the case. I was a 16-year-old kid yeah. thrown into this industry, and I had no idea what I was yeah. doing. I was too shy to talk to people, yeah. mostly in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that was had nothing to do with me being a bitch. I was just super shy, yeah, and it was very being overwhelming. A diva. Yeah. yeah, it was just really overwhelming. When I was in high school, I didn't want to be a model. That mm -hmm. was not something that was like on my list. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm going to grow up to be a model. No. Yeah. I was going to go to college. Didn't know where I wanted to go yet. Mm -hmm. I got scouted and my parents were like, just, just try it. Just do yeah. it. And I did. And I'm so grateful for everything. Did you expect it to be right off the bat getting that insane amount of success? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I absolutely did not. Cause it was so soon. I was only signed with them for like a couple months or weeks. I don't even remember. My second show was the Prada show mm -hmm. and I was an exclusive and yeah. I always knew. So everyone, what does it mean to be an exclusive? An exclusive model. When you're an exclusive model for a brand, you are only allowed to work with that brand yeah. or when you're an exclusive girl for one season, you can only do that show for that season. Yeah. And that was me for Prada. So you could only do Prada this season? That season, yes. I could okay. only do Prada. But so do actually, you get paid more for that? Or no, like, why can't no, they just no, no, do no, no. that? Why can't no, they just no. be like, this girl, she can't do any other shows. She's going to do ours. You know, like, that sounds crazy. There's only certain brands that do that. And mm -hmm. Prada is the biggest thing you can do as a so model. is that like the biggest honor in fashion absolutely because yeah. i remember you kind of explaining this to me like one season like this was like the biggest season yeah was this this season no this was not this season okay. that was the season after because okay. okay. when you do something like that the product exclusive all eyes are on you all eyes are on you this is and like the new makes your career girl. yeah yes so what was that like i see you now as the established yasmin yeah. who has done 12 or more Vogue yeah. covers. You've done like every single job that you've probably ever wanted to do. Yes, absolutely. But like, what was she before all of this, before this was normal, before all of this? Like, what was that like? It was really overwhelming. Yeah. And I remember being really scared. I remember being 16, sitting at Prada, waiting to do my fitting, seeing all of these supermodels. Did you have, yeah, like, did you have 
a sense of I like what am I doing here or were you always kind of because there's a, so many different types of people in the world I have a friend that is like one of these people yeah who just has a certain level of confidence and they just fucking own it mm-hmm. and they've always owned it and they can walk into any room and they're confident was that you at 16 or what was did you have slight imposter syndrome where you like what the fuck am I doing in no, here? No, it it was that was not I was not that yeah. confident at sixteen. Yeah. Absolutely not. What but was your headspace going into that? My agents were all like, "Oh, you're gonna blow up. You're gonna yeah. be so big." And they definitely gave me a lot of confidence. I was yeah. like, "Oh wait, shit! Like, yeah. if I do fuck, prod, maybe I, I will. Like, yeah. Maybe I will be fucking yeah. huge. Like, who knows?" And it definitely gave me a little bit of confidence, yeah. but it also made me really insecure. In what in sense? A way. Like, I'm not what if I let them down exactly yeah. I was like what if I let them down what if I don't pop off what if I yeah. don't turn into this huge model it mm-hmm. was very scary and yeah. it was super intimidating for me it was really crazy then I started working so much mm-hmm. and it definitely gave me a confidence boost I was started this working after so the, much. the initial Prada show yes it was after the Prada so after show. that what happened next season after the Prada show I did the Prada campaign and the season after I was doing an insane amount of shows Mm -hmm. with, and I was so, I was 17 years old Mm -hmm. doing four shows a day for a month long. Yeah. Working every day, these crazy hours, having no sleep. Yeah. Like sometimes I slept for like two hours a night Mm -hmm. and then like I got home at maybe like 3 a.m. from a fitting and I had to wake up at 5 a.m. to go to another fitting or yeah. for the call time of the show. And it was really exhausting. Yeah. It was really, it was too much for me. I was not able to handle that at yeah. the time. I was way too young. I was 17 yeah. years old, fresh out of high school. Maybe this is just me, but whenever exciting shit happens to me, I'm like freaking the fuck yes. out. I'm like, oh my yes. God, like what the fuck? Is exactly. This, is this how, you know what I mean? Like, was that happening to you? Like what I'm literally like the most wanted right. girl in New York Fashion Week right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. I'm the most wanted model at New- in New York Fashion Week. <laughs> For a period of time in your yeah. life, you were. Yeah. Isn't that like, that's yeah. fucking insane. Like, it was I'm insane. on your behalf. Like what was going through your head? You were alone in New York City and you were like living like every single girl's dream. Like, yeah that's nuts bro yeah it's fucking nuts and even now when i look back i'm like yeah that was crazy how did i even do that yeah. no sleep how was your walk back then were you a natural walker like did you have to learn how to do it were you shitty at first but like no one really cared um, like what happened this is kind of funny because i used to be a dancer yeah uh growing up i was mm-hmm. a dancer so walking was the one thing that came kind of easy for me i knew how to use my body yeah so I knew you how to walk. Yeah, you had some coordinates. Yes. Like you knew what you were doing. Exactly. Coordination. So I never I never took any like like lessons. Yeah. Any like runway lessons. No. So that came very easy for me. Yes, for sure. Which I was very grateful for. In the beginning, I didn't go all out. Yeah. Now I'm just like, when I, now when I walk a runway, it's like hip. It, yeah shoulders well also too like well, as you establish yourself I, in the industry as a model you can have your own walk exactly and, like it doesn't matter exactly. you don't need to like fit yeah. into the mold yeah. of like this is the runway walk at some point i started doing like a little bit more i got, I got a little bit older and i started mm-hmm. doing a little bit more sexy shows yeah. that i had to like walk sexy mm-hmm. and for some like, reason what's a sexy show a sexy well more like a sexy walk or like, like a super what like feminine. A brand that you'd like tie with a sexy show a Versace yeah for okay. example a Versace and or like Moogler or something mm-hmm. there's a, a lot of shows yeah and I was getting so used to walking sexy mm-hmm. that I couldn't I couldn't stop myself I couldn't stop yeah. myself I would do these <laughs> I would do these like high fashion shows <laughs> and clients that. would call my agents <laughs> clients would call my agents and they were like if Yasmin doesn't tone down her walk, <laughs> she's canceled. She's canceled. They were literally like, she's so canceled. She, if she doesn't tone down her walk. Is New York Fashion Week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I'm like showing up at like fucking like Prada trying to do a sexy walk. No, it doesn't work. Like, you can't do that yeah. at Prada. You can't yeah. show up doing a sexy walk at Prada. No. You're a mannequin at Prada. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah for sure. It was fun. I, I changed so much. Even, even the way changed I look. Changed in what way? I changed a lot as a person. I changed a like lot. Like, who were you at 16 to, to who you are now? Okay, so here's the thing. I was super confident with my looks mm-hmm. in high school and yeah. everything, with myself in it's high school. It's funny because same, until I started modeling. Exactly, yeah. that's what I was going to say. how that happened. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, when I when I started modeling, I just got so insecure mm -hmm. and I started hating the way I looked cuz you see all of these beautiful you girls all, and you also see every everything on your face. Exactly. You find out every yes. single problem of your face cuz exactly. you'll capture it in every single lighting yeah. and every angle. Every single lighting, every angle and you see all of these pictures yeah. and you're like, "Wait, fuck, like like I look like that?" I thought I, I, I was had no decent. Idea I looked like that. Exactly. Yeah, no idea. Way. Did you have the same, were you in the no, same you know, situation? I thought I was a cute girl before in right. high school. I right. actually thought I was like hot and pretty. Exactly. And I had no problem with what right. I looked like. Yeah. I wasn't like going home and crying about being ugly and then started modeling. And I was like literally going home and crying about being ugly. I was Me like, too. I'm hideous. Yes. And it's so interesting because like it's you, everyone expects it to be the opposite. Yeah. You just see your face in a different way. The amount of times I called my mom crying yeah. about my looks or about photos. Also, to be completely honest with you, I've never done a photo shoot and seen photos that I'm like, you love. whoa, yeah. I look amazing. Yeah. N yeah. Not once in my life. Not once? No, no. I've done, I've done photo shoots that I've loved yeah. and the whole concept was amazing. The styling was amazing. Mm -hmm. The photography was amazing. But I, w I was more so focused on my face and myself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this could be better. You're basically setting yourself to a standard that will never exist. Because yeah. you have shot with every photographer. Right. You have shot with every single set of lighting. You've shot in every single concept. Yes, I have. And you're still unsatisfied. Yeah. So the only thing that needs to be changed is how you're looking at it. Absolutely. Because that's the only thing that will ever sure. need to change for you to get a different result. It's realizing, like, I look good. I look fucking hot. What I always did, I would always compare myself to other girls. Yeah. I would like see these supermodels and I'm like, oh, wait, I need to look more like that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I went wrong. Yeah. I had to stop comparing myself. I still do it. We yeah. all do it. You yeah. probably do it yeah, too. Of course. We all do it. And I don't think that will ever go away. It's like that with everything, not just looks like you, right. you subconsciously compare your life yeah. to everyone around exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. And then now we have these devices where you can compare your life to everyone that exists yeah. that has a phone. Yeah. So it, that's why it's fucking with everyone's heads because like you you didn't have access to seeing this many beautiful, rich, successful people all hours of the day. Yeah. Like now this is so accessible to us, so in our face, and it makes us think we're uglier than we are and that we're poorer that, than we are and that we're we need to be doing more than we are. It's like it's really fucking with everybody. Yeah, especially I feel so bad for young girls right now cuz yeah. when we were young Instagram was a thing but not, not like it is right extent. now. Yeah. And that's the thing is girls are still looking up at you right now and mm -hmm. me and thinking the exact right. same thing. Right. Like I, I'm comparing myself to this yeah. and we're still doing that in this situation being like, I still think I'm ugly. So like, where does it end? You know what I mean? It never and ends. You see like on like girls photoshopping themselves, yeah. like the biggest supermodels right. in the entire world right. that like, it just doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense. It literally doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. And that's the thing. I feel like the biggest supermodels in the world are the most insecure. Even when yeah. I was the most successful, I was the most insecure. And that was because I would just like, how do I say this shit? I would go home and see my family or my friends. Mm -hmm. And they all saw me as like, a supermodel obviously yeah. and they like looked up to me mm -hmm. which is obviously understandable but I would go home and I would walk around without makeup mm -hmm. or like not dressed up and I would feel so like I always felt pressure to look good yeah and if I didn't look good once I felt like I would like let people down or I don't look like the way I look like in the photos or, well, or something that's you know? the thing about modeling and about beauty in general is that it's such a fine it comes with so much pain yeah. attached to it yeah. because especially, and it's like everything is a double-edged sword, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. And like for us to fixate on all the negatives would be foolish right. way of right. looking at it. But when your worth and all people seem to be rewarding mm -hmm. you on and all, all of what has come to you mm -hmm. is for and because mm -hmm. you're beautiful oh. or you're pretty, it fucks with your head. Yeah. And I'm very aware yeah. that pretty much all of all of my success in life, not all of it, but a huge chunk of it 
and same with you yeah. it has to do with what we look like absolutely do you think anyone would give a shit about my instagram right if i wasn't a cute girl like and i'm aware of that and it, and it fucks with my head and you're aware of it too absolutely like you're a fucking supermodel yeah you know what i mean yeah so it's it's a very interesting pain to carry of like okay so if i'm not beautiful today like is anyone gonna care like is that all people care about? It's just such a shallow thing to be, to have your currency on. Mm-hmm. Your currency of yeah. as an individual is how yeah. pretty you are. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it. It fucks with that's your it. head. It, it fucks, fucks with, with your you. head. Yeah. And then sometimes that's, sometimes you catch yourself yeah. focusing on that so much. Yeah. I've been having this, th- well, I feel like you probably have the same thing. Mm -hmm. If someone says I'm beautiful based Mm -hmm. on the way I look, Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. It doesn't. It means nothing to me anymore. Yeah. It's just kind of like, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, obviously it's really nice. Of course. Yes, of course. Yes. But it's like, as a model, you like... Yeah, it's like you know. it's like, and people are gonna be like, "Oh, poor you." People yeah. are calling you. Beautiful of course, of too course, much. no. Like, I appreciate it when someone says that, and it's mm-hmm. not like, "Oh my god, I feel so bad for myself." She just called me pretty. No, yeah, it's more so that it doesn't mean anything, and any, it doesn't mean anything. To it me holds anymore. no value. Exactly. Yeah, because it's it's. Is there anything else you're looking at, other than that? Right. Because that's the right. only thing you seem to be exactly. praising me on is exactly. what I look like. Like, there's. I'm like also inside also too like it's the one thing you don't have to work for right you know what I mean it's just like Mm -hmm. handed to you and then it's like okay so no one's rewarding me for anything I'm doing that is actually myself exactly you know what I mean like here's like the here's the body delivering it to you and that's all I'm being praised on for my whole life and then here's like the actual gears Mm -hmm. grinding inside that like is looked at less yeah for sure but at the same token like it's a double-edged sword every every positive in life is a double-edged sword Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna complain that that we were given to be cute girls like are you kidding me like that's the dumbest shit i've ever heard in my entire life but we are pointing out the flaws that come with it and that it's not just happiness and rainbows and your life's great because you're a model and that everything works out for you and you feel so good about yourself and you're so instantly confident when you're a model. That's the point we're making. The point we're making is that that's not the reality and there's shittiness that comes with it too. No one's perfect and no one will ever feel perfect. And actually like something I've noticed about you is you do have a really good sense of confidence like you always you've always had that and i've always been like i want a little bit of that sometimes when i'm not confident Mm -hmm. it's a way to like protect myself it's like oh i don't want people to think that i'm like feeling insecure today so i'm just gonna like act super confident why do you get scared of i don't want to i don't want anyone to think i'm insecure i don't know because it's interesting the different a ways we look at that fucking issue because in there's a part of me that like want is happy to show people i'm insecure yeah like i'm like a, i'm it's like a relief yeah. like i want you yeah. to realize yeah, yeah, like yeah. i'm yeah i'm dumb yeah. too you know no of uh, course no no but it's it's but that's the thing i know that's not everybody like i know that there's so many different ways of going through life and like how you want people to perceive you mm-hmm. and how and also who you want to be in the room. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And I respect you for wanting to be, and this is what I need more of is what I realized like growing up and also becoming like a woman and kind of letting go of this juvenile way I've gone through my whole life. And that's being like a powerful woman in a room and commanding a room and just owning her shit yeah. and like being unapologetically herself and owning it. Like you've always been able to, to do that. But sometimes it can kind of be a bad thing actually like so many people like so many of my friends have come up to me and they were like oh when i first met you i was so intimidated by you i thought you were going to be fucking yeah. evil yeah i also feel like i look meaner on social media than i, I am think, in real life I think, yeah i think so everyone kind of pe- looks like yeah. meaner unless yeah. you're actually yeah. mean yeah i feel like everyone's like first interpretations of someone i even do this too and i i still believe everyone's like a good person in a sense but like you kind of just assume people aren't gonna like you at first and like i always assume people are just gonna be like mean at first yeah and like i always pray that they're not but i'm assuming because most of the time that's correct um or you have to like break through a shell how did you get to a point where you were just like I'm good enough to talk like this. I'm good enough to walk like this. And I'm good enough to stand here and look uh, at you like this. <laughs> you you command like this 
I don't know how to explain it. It's like just like a very assertive confidence that I respect. And I'm always like, fuck yeah. Like, I love that. I wish I could write a book for you <laughs> and explain it for you step by step. But maybe you're just not built for that life, Charlotte. <laughs> no, you honestly might be right. Well, the thing is, you can kind of like turn yourself into anything you want you yourself to be. And like, that's more of like a womanly thing. Yeah. And like, um, I'm sure if I let go of certain things and maybe held on to the fact of like, I do want to intimidate mm -hmm. people in this yeah. room. Like, then do you know I could. Do how much fun that is? Do you know how much fun it is <laughs> to that's talk to thing. a boy? Yeah. I mean, and you make him shake. Okay, so we have such different ways of flirting with guys. We are like okay, see, completely. I don't always do this. No, 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 but it's no, but this this is the thing. There's so many types of people. We have just different, like different ways of going through it right. in the room. Because I am so how never. You, I so this is. I'm just like I've never myself. seen you flirt in my life. I'm just like, hey, what's up? Like, and guys are down with it. So right. I'm just like, okay, I don't need to change. This is awesome. Um. But no, no I never try to intimidate them ever. I want them to intimidate me. And like with guys, I am, I feel like my way of dealing with, it's so funny that we actually do have completely different styles. Oh, they both are effective. Yeah. So they're just different. Like yeah. whichever one you kind of lean towards. I don't remember the last time. I don't think I've ever seen you flirt, flirt with a guy. No. Okay. Yeah. Granted, there's never guys I want to flirt with. Like right. it's always... They're just never interesting to me. Always me starting as a friend. And it's always me not giving a shit because I actually don't. Don't. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And that's that it seems to work for me because they don't understand why this girl doesn't want to hook up with me yeah. or why this girl doesn't want to. I don't know. See, this is the thing is maybe I care way too like not enough. But that seems to be my best flirting tactic because guys don't know yes. what the fuck to do with me. I feel like that's a good thing. Yeah. Like I mean, not giving a shit yeah. is going to make someone want you. Yeah. And I do that, but it's like I flirt at first and then I give you nothing. Because mm -hmm. like I get over you it. I get bored. Tease. Yeah, you I do a little tease and, you play and like then I get bored. You play, you play a little game. Is yeah. What it is. Uh, and, and a lot of people do. The game is fun. Don't and call like me I, out. I, res I, pardon? I said, don't call me out. <laughs> no, no. I mean, the game's fun and I, I see it all the time. Yeah. I just like, can't play that game. I can't right. do it. And like, I feel like that's my charm yeah. is that I can't play the game. Yep. So like, I'm not going to, I'm sure. not going to play this game with you. I'm just going to be super upfront. Like, here's all my shit. Take it or leave it. Like that's yeah. actually the game yeah. I play and yeah. it works. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. <laughs> As I said, you're just not made for that life. I don't think it's I was just made not for that for you. Life. Do you have a type when it comes to guys? Do I have a type? Yeah. Um, I used to only. And like, what was that? No, I used to only like blonde, blonde, blonde boys. boys when I, was I remember school. there was a point you only liked pretty boys, like pretty, yes. pretty hot. I, no, like, I, like a Abercrombie model looking boy. Yeah, absolutely. I went through that phase. I was young. And I didn't know what I was doing. No, I, I still like pretty boys, but... Me too, honestly. But that, like, when I was in high school, that's mm -hmm. all I liked. Yeah. Only, like, blonde, pretty boys. And then when I started modeling, same shit. What do you mean, same shit? When I started modeling, it was... At first, it was just pretty boys. Mm -hmm. And I dated a model once. Interesting. Do you have a type? Part no. No? I have no type. My type is guys who are comfortable with themselves. Right. And that are, like, so, like, weird and... Yeah. No same. You know, like... I That's the most attractive thing about a guy. There's times where I literally am, I find myself attracted to like the ugliest people in the room, but they're just so weird. They're just so ridiculous. Yes. That's, I'm in that phase right now. I'm like in love with the craziest looking guy. Well, mm -hmm. not in love, but crazy like, looking in what sense? Like head like to toe tattoos or oh, like ugly? Actually, kind of. He's head to toe in tattoos? Also. What do you mean kind of? Is mm -hmm. he head to toe in tattoos? Wait, who? The guy that you're talking to. One of them. How many guys are you talking to? I can't tell you that. You can tell me that. <laughs> I'm talking to four guys. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, Only so like three. I also, mm -hmm. like for my type, Yeah. I have a thing right now for guys that are kind of like dad that kind of have like dad bods is that okay no i've been seeing this trend go around everywhere where girls are starting to say that they prefer dad bods to abs but i prefer like a very 
fit stature like and i still like dad bods i think they're cute mm-hmm. and so many of the guys that mm-hmm. i've like liked and yeah. like have hooked up with mm-hmm. have dad bods yeah. so like i and i and there's nothing wrong with it truly i don't think anything's wrong with it but yes i prefer like jason momoa's body like oh, ripped me. aquaman yeah not like me, if Ronald that's Rich. if you're giving me the choice the gun to my head i will really? take it yeah for sure for i sure. used to be like that but now i'm like i, I like, like people are lying if they say that they like dad no, bods over I'm a rip lying. over aquaman's body really dude over aquaman's yes, body you'd rather that's have a dad too much bod. for me I, I i don't want that no absolutely not that's my crazy. ex i was feeding him so much what do you mean feed you're trying to get him fat yes i wanted to get him fat bro is that fucked up it's just like crazy no, I, I, I i like it I you did you want it to get him fat with the motive if i get him fat no girls will find him desirable like was that the mo because that's like um, an angle i could see of like there's something that comes with getting him fat no i just like i just like a stomach i just want to be able to like hold something but i'm cool with skinny boys too me too not i like, like skinny boys too many muscles that's not no Aquaman, absolutely not. That's like my in my head, like my fantasy, like guy's okay. body, but they don't exist. And like, I've also never seen you with a guy that looks like that. Yeah, and there's never. a reason why. There's a reason why the guys like from back home maybe more like looked like that. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, well, I just like went for looks when I was 16. Right. Like sweet guys, but who were hot. I still never picked the asshole. I had enough of a sense to not to do that. I still go for the assholes sometimes, but I'm definitely You definitely learning. still go for the assholes. Yeah, it's I feel like you're like addicted to the assholes. Oh, it's it's an absolute addiction, absolutely. I've been kind of seeing this guy. He is so he always relies on me. Mm-hmm. He can't do anything without me. I already am not and into this. Yeah, no, no, no. Me neither. Like it's just he's just not for me. He's a yeah. sweetheart though. He's he's absolutely amazing, but yeah. he's just not for me. Great yeah. guy though. It's sad how many of those there are, yeah, you know, like know. great guys that aren't for I me. Know. I feel like that's every guy I've ever met. Are you seeing anyone? No, there's I've met so many great again, like great guys that I would be so lucky to date. Truly, like yeah. I would feel lucky to date yeah. them, but I can't do it. Like I, I actually like can't. You, it's so hard for you to like someone. You yeah. never like. Oh, anyone. I, I know, dude. Anyone. I know. I know. It's crazy. I know. Like, I don't even remember the last time you went up to me and you were like, oh, my God, I like this guy so much. No, that doesn't happen with Dude, you. Dude, I know. It's actually a problem. Are you okay? Yeah, I know. Do you need help? I just, <laughs> I mean, called the fuck out. <laughs> I go back and forth between if I'm, if it's like a fear of commitment yeah, or if it's, I truly haven't met the right person. I refuse right, to settle. Right. It's like I go back and forth between that. And I think I'm somewhere in between. Right. I think they're, I know, I think, I think I honestly just haven't met the right person. Do and there's you, guys that I like and have had attractions to, and that's already rare in its right. own sense. Absolutely. And I did this quarantine. Like I found guys and talked to guys that I was attracted to and, and attracted to. And then I talked to guys that I had a connection with that I wasn't that attracted to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, I need both. And that's what's hard to find. But I also feel like you tend to always find something wrong in guys. Like you, but you Absolutely, look for yeah. it. You search yeah. for it. I, I can't like help if, but do it. If there's nothing wrong with them, you'll find something. And it's not to say like who I'm not perfect. I don't expect anyone to be perfect, Mm -hmm. but I expect them to have a certain amount of emotional intelligence to where I don't feel like I'm their mom. And like that actually I find is hard to find in guys. Like I found guys where our souls match and we can talk forever and the sexual connection isn't there. Or I find these guys that are so hot. Right, right, right. But they, I am so not intellectually stimulated at all. I find something wrong to your point with so many guys i do think it has served me more than it than it's worked against me because i don't jump into relationships if i'm not interested in you we'll be homies till the end i will literally dab you up as soon as i'll set you up with my friends yeah we'll be good forever period it's just you're not for me you know friends with all of my exes well friendly let's keep (laughs) it at that that. civil i'm friendly with all of my exes for sure friendly in what sense like do you guys text or if you saw each other it'd be totally fine 
I mean, there's certain texts, uh, there's certain exes that I like still talk to as yeah. friends. Like we, we talk, we like even like hang out sometimes, but there's also certain exes that like we text, we check up on, we check in on each other, but yeah. that's it. And yeah. it's like, if we would run into honestly, each other, we would say hi. Like, but. does there need to be more than that? No, you know what I mean? Not. Like, what's the point? If, absolutely if not. not. They do say if you can remain friends, like genuine friends, like mm-hmm. friends, not just like a check in. It means you're still in love or you are never in love. Now that's fucked up. Why? That's are there, fucked up. Do you believe in that or no? No, I don't think so. Why? I have an ex and we're still we're still friends. He has a new girlfriend and everything. Yeah. Like we we hang out sometimes as friends. Yeah. And that and that's it. But I have no feelings for him. And do you think that you were never in love? <sighs> when you look back? Mm. Not 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 or do you think no, I was, was not love? madly in love with him? No, but that's the thing is then that theory makes sense. And I'm curious yeah. to someone who has had most multiple relationships. I have a question for you. What is it? So since you never like any guys, right? It's really this hard. True. For you. The rumors are correct. Have you ever been in love? No, um, I'm curious. I don't think so. You don't think I so? I don't think so. It's a tough question to ask. It's a tough question to answer and not to have anything to do with the other person. Mm hmm. But I think first relationships, a lot of it is trial and error. Yeah. And like, you don't really know what you're doing yeah. for the first relationship for sure. that you're Absolutely. in. And I think at the time, again, I think everyone also says this, like you think that you're in love, but mm-hmm. you're not. Until so, you break up and you realize until that you, you break up into until you experience more life. And then you're like, oh, wait, that was not me being in love. That was something else. And so I think that's what happened to me. I think I thought I was in love at the time with my ex and then growing up i realized we were completely different people and like that was just insane amount of like like there was love there Mm -hmm. no doubt about it of course yeah but i don't think i was in love with him i would love to see you in love i would love to see me in love you've seen me in love yeah yeah i have fully lost myself yeah you went fucking insane yeah you didn't go insane he was just insane you know what i mean he was just driving me insane he was truly that expression he was truly driving you insane. yeah yeah I just cared so much. See, this is the thing that maybe I'm subconsciously afraid of is mm-hmm. the caring so much. Right. And like, cause you lose control of yeah. your feelings and you lose control of how. Absolutely. And yeah. once you're, once you're so in love with someone, all you want to do is like be with them and making yeah. sure that they're okay. I haven't been in love and I know that to be certain. And, right. and I kind of like that naiveness that i will not have for the rest of my right. life i'm living in it right now i'll look back on this time being like oh my god remember you're 22 and so naive and right. never had been in love and like we're so positive and enthusiastic about the world <laughs> remember that um, <laughs> how cute that was yeah so right now i'm there and i'm enjoying every second of it um, to your point to care about someone that much and to truly and, and care so much about losing them. Yeah. Like, what? what is that like? Like, I can't... It's actually... I'm curious. Yeah. Like... I always thought I was in love with a mm-hmm. lot of guys. Yeah. But then, in my last relationship, I actually fell really hard. Mm-hmm. I was really in love. We were both super in love with yeah. each other. And it's just like... It's crazy how your entire life, you feel like people are your number one person like Mm -hmm. your your friends or like your family but when you meet someone when you meet someone new and you're so in love and that and that person is your number one person Mm -hmm. that's just a crazy feeling and it's super overwhelming it's Mm -hmm. really overwhelming and and it's kind of hard body high a body high like do you feel like even you describing that i felt like a body high really that's why i asked yeah Yeah, i did i felt like a rush of like endorphins (laughs) Yeah, I felt like warm. Did you feel that too? Really? Or am I just crazy? Oh god, I, I just feel things. Sometimes. Oh wait, you do? Pardon? So what, so you do feel things? No, no, no. I mean, yeah, I have a heart, but I mean, like, no, like when I, I people like I don't know. I'm just yeah. weird. I'm just weird in that sense. It's a really intense feeling. It's really intense, and it can also cause a lot of like insecurities. Mm-hmm. You know. Because it's like, I've never, I was never Mm -hmm. insecure in any of my relationships. Something that worries about, that worries me about falling in love that I've actually talked to Kiara Mm -hmm. about. She's like, Charlotte, you're not crazy and you're not anxious because you haven't fallen in love yet. She's like, just wait, just you wait. And I was like, okay, I'll just, that sounds terrible. Oh, it's going to happen. She said like, 
the minute like you fall in love with somebody you are now anxious you become this paranoid person and you don't recognize yeah and and that's that's the thing that gets me yeah of and I guess it comes down to that there's so much riding and it just drives Mm -hmm. you insane part of it is it's like I don't want that yeah yeah. I don't want to lose like myself at all. I don't want to come out. But it doesn't I mean, have to be like that. It, yeah. It really depends on the relationship. I, and I know it's worth it. I've heard way too many testimonials sure. across everyone, across every single generation that's yeah. ever lived yeah. that will argue with me and tell me that it's worth it. There's, there's way too many, there's, there's way too many love <laughs> songs out there for this not to be the best thing on earth. Truly. Love's the only thing to make life worth living. It's yeah. the only like true drug there is that makes all of this Mm -hmm. very cruel world worth living and it makes people go crazy it does for sure but it's also the most amazing feeling in the world yeah yes and yes kind of Mm -hmm. kind of but that's just that's also because it was just like an intense relationship intense in what way it was very In a relationship, when you're super in love with someone, you're not as focused on yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely what what I had. I was so worried about the other person and always wanting that person to be okay and like fine. And so I kind of started to lose myself in a sense. And even my friends noticed this. They were like, you're changing into a completely different person. And In what way were you changing? I would put him first. I would just like rather be with him than go fly across the ocean and mm-hmm. work and yeah. do a photo shoot, which is never good. Mm-hmm. That's never good because work should be number one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But then like when you break up with someone, you start to see that that situation, it's, it's just not a good situation. Like mm-hmm. you should always focus on yourself and as long as you don't know who you are and what you want in life as long as you don't have your shit together your own shit I don't think you should be with someone Mm -hmm. that doesn't have their shit together and there's some points in life where you actually shouldn't be with someone period yeah absolutely really because it holds a lot of baggage like I like going through something you're going through shit yourself Mm -hmm. is already intense enough and then you're dating someone that's also going through a lot of shit it weighs on you. Yeah. And it's just too much. Actually, I want to go back to the question I asked you because I didn't get a full answer because we got mm-hmm. so deep into something else. The thing that I find so fascinating about you is that you have lived this like crazy life as such a successful model, mm-hmm. like truly. Yes. And you would have never, you would never know because yeah. you're so humble. Mm-hmm. You never bring it up. Mm-hmm. You have no ego. You are just like chill. Like, I feel like I'm talking to, like, my uh, my cousin. Like, right, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you literally would never know that you have the amount of success that you have. Which, by the way, good on you. Like, that's, like, really yeah. good sh- sh- yeah. like, sign of character. Mm-hmm. And you were raised right, and you have a good head mm-hmm. on your shoulders. I'm curious how, from 16, Yasmin had never done Vogue, had never done anything, mm-hmm. had just moved to New York, or had mm-hmm. just started to model, who she was then cons and whatnot flaws and whatnot to who you are now and how's that how has that changed yasmin at 16 was kind of insecure she was not the nicest Mm -hmm. i've gotten a lot nicer over time because i met so many amazing inspiring people that made me want to be a better person Mm -hmm. and people that worked so hard and people that came from nothing i've just like seen so many amazing people and all of these people were inspiring me so much to be a better person i was never like entitled or like mean or but i was just because i was so so insecure i was just like at that time what would it have been i was a young girl thrown into this crazy industry and i was insecure about my looks i was insecure about my behavior i was insecure about everything Mm because people would judge me obviously all the time Mm -hmm which is just really hard on a young girl. I was just not the happiest with myself. And now I'm finally like confident and happy with myself, happy with what I've done and so grateful for what I've done. Cause I've done all, I've done all of these amazing things that 
I never would have would have imagined Mm -hmm. growing up in Amsterdam going to school living across the ocean I never would have imagined that I would move to America and be such a huge model and that just really even when I look back now at the things that I've done in my career at the time I probably wasn't as grateful I obviously was grateful but now that I'm older and now I realize holy shit I've I I really I've everything I did was amazing like I did this all by myself with no help and it's just like it really humbled me and I'm so grateful for everything that I've ever done I'm still growing I'm still learning I still make mistakes but I'm just should yeah Yeah. obviously that's how you learn yeah when you ask that question it's kind of hard because it's like I'm nowhere near where I want to be and I will still grow so much Mm -hmm. and like I'm not done with my life there's still so much more for me to come hopefully I'm just a better person Mm -hmm. i'm just a nicer person that's honestly all you can hope for some people turn shittier yeah absolutely you know what i mean especially when they start gaining success i was about to say especially a lot of the time after success yeah you know yeah no success actually made me a better person yeah yeah absolutely and a a humbler person yeah for sure a more grateful person yeah and a more aware person do you ever have moments still where you're like, I can't believe this is my fucking life? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, this is my fucking yeah. life. Are you kidding me? Like, I was just plopped on this fucking yeah. earth, and this was I the know. story that I got. This story yeah. is my story. Right. Like, we could have been anyone. You yeah. could have been anybody. Yeah, I was talking about this with my mom, actually, a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. saying the exact same thing. I was like, who would have thought? Like, the universe gave you the life that you have, which is, like, a supermodel. Like, are you kidding? That's fucking insane. Well, I'm not a supermodel. Okay, well, yeah, you are, but, <laughs> like, yeah, you are. No. <laughs> I mean, you have to be, like, you have to be, like, 35 to be a supermodel. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. you're just, like, you're just doing your work right. until you get, right. like, that, like, whatever. But you are. That's fucking insane. What about you? Do I ever have moments like that? Well, no. Like, have you changed a lot since you were 16 years oh, old? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, she... I mean, I'm a, yeah, no, I'm a completely different person. Like, in a good way or in a bad way? Uh, in, in, like, the most amazing way. Okay, good. <laughs> good. That makes me happy. I asked myself the really tough questions really young, which is, who are you going to be? Who do you want to be? Mm-hmm. And how are you going to do it? Right. And I knew when I was 16 or 15, I wasn't who I wanted to be. Yeah. But that's when I started trying. I was an angry, like, unhappy child, like, truly. And I didn't know how to, like, deal with my emotions properly. I noticed, I think, like, my only desire in life was to be well-liked and, like, to have people who genuinely wanted me around. And I noticed then that that wasn't who I was, Mm -hmm. truly. Mm -hmm. Like, I noticed there was all these girls that were, like, happier than me and that were sweeter than me. Having so many friends. And that my friends liked more. My own friends liked more. Moving to America humbled me so much because I went from, like, being this, like, big fish in a small pond of Toronto Mm -hmm. and coming to L.A. where I knew nobody had no friends and nothing. Yeah. I really had to, like, start from zero, and it made me such a like better person because i i dissolved all ego that i had it's not like i even had a big ego in toronto i really didn't yeah it was just i had no reason to grow i had all of my friends i had nothing pushing me to do anything it was always like a constant reminder of like who do you want to become like i and it was always so important to be a good person truly and meaning it too like not just like oh i'm gonna be a good person and make this look like I'm a good person. Because yeah. I knew at a young age that wasn't the right answer. Right. If you want to be a good person, you have to like go to the depth of your soul. Absolutely. And figure out how to do it. Absolutely. And people will be able to read that. For sure. And so I, I did a lot of that as a kid. And I don't know why I was able to do it. And it still puzzles me why I was able to do it. But the truth is that I, I figured a lot of shit out. A lot of psychoanalyzing behaviors. And, and truly asking why constantly constantly to everything that pops up why did you just do that oh because you're insecure about this thing this thing this thing okay why did you do that why do you feel insecure and just keep going down this rabbit hole until you finally get to the place you're unhappy or you're right exactly and then you're self-awareness is so important 
and then and then you're able to actually get right, to a place where right. you want to be and to a person you want to mm-hmm. be and i was actually like talking to my friend today about you mm-hmm. and i don't know how it got brought up but yeah. i was like i don't think i've ever seen charlotte fight with like argue with anyone or fight like yeah. Char- like she is very like calm and literally today i was telling my friend how like you never have problems with anyone mm-hmm anyone well thank you but it's it's true (laughs) i feel like i just like became a wiser person in the sense of like this isn't serving me this isn't serving the people around me i'm not this isn't who i want to be and i remember making an active decision back then for example to not be intimidating and and i remember going to parties and people girls would always think i was going to be a mean girl like in toronto and like i would go out of my way to like show them like my heart right away know that i like p- sometimes people receive me mm-hmm. as very harsh yeah. or like people are scared of me too sometimes yeah. but i'm like trying so hard to change that cuz actually i'm i can be really hard on the outside yeah but i'm a soft i know you inside. are yeah I'm you are softy mm-hmm. that's the thing is that's like your truth the truth is like you're not like some tough bitch the truth is you can do it and yeah. play that role right. and put that and put that suit on when you want because you have all the sure. tools to for do sure it. but the truth is you're just a sweet girl who like the rest of us is just trying to get by and like have people love you and and love another person everyone kind of has like a layer or like a protection shield that they go out into the world and that's the person they play. Not everybody, but Mm -hmm. a lot of people do. But again, to your point, I don't feel like it's a closed chapter. And I think the thing that I want to work on and I should work on is like being more confident, being able to have those tools that you have, being able to control the room and like be more of a woman because I know I'm very much a child. But and that's okay. That's okay. That's I, okay. Having, if that's, that's you, then that's life. fucking you. I'm literally having the time. I don't life. think you should change that. I think that's amazing about <laughs> you, you, actually. Thank you. I um, think, yeah, you're the fucking best. What do you mean? <laughs> be a kid as long as you can. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. To you're going to have plenty of time <laughs> to be an adult. Thank you for coming to this Thank podcast. you. I love you so much. I'm very happy that you are in my life. Every time I describe you to people, the first thing I was, I was like, you, she's so fucking successful and you would have no idea. Like, really? That's so rare, dude. <laughs> it's truly remarkable. Even when we don't talk for that long, mm-hmm. like I'm always like, yeah. That's the thing. Even if we sometimes don't talk for a yeah. while, when we see each other again, mm-hmm. it's like nothing has ever changed. Yeah. 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 I know you have a tough exterior sometimes, but like exactly. you're, you're a good egg, yeah. you know, and yeah. I can say that with confidence. Yeah. You're a good egg. Absolutely. Well, thank you for I having me so on this much. Part. I love you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>